yeah, I'll drive there. Maybe it was just in the uh, cycle. I'm taking it again. I don't know if you are right there. We're good? Okay, inshallah, we will get started. السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين سيدنا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد جزاكم الله خيرا brothers and sisters and uh, welcome to our ongoing uh, bi-weekly series um, it's, it's a general lecture series that we um, we started many years ago. We paused during the pandemic and made it virtual through Zoom. And now that we've established this place, a year later, we want to resume that. So every two weeks, specifically the first and third Sundays of the month, we want to have this general gathering. And then we're going to reserve a separate time to have the uh, adult conversation called Honest Talk. We're going to have our first session of that, inshallah, next Sunday. Um, if everything holds, we'll do it that you know, wherein we can have, you know, deeper topics, spend more time, get all the, you know, teenagers and adults both can be part of it. But this one is exploring the Quran. That's the general theme of this uh, bi-weekly uh, lecture series. And because we're in the fall, Thanksgiving came, we decided to focus on Surah An-Nahl, a surah that reminds us about the very small blessings we get from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that are actually bigger than they appear to us. So each blessing Allah mentions called a ni'mah has a very, very deep um, exploration if you look at it. And there are many lessons. One of the things I wanted to recap on before we move forward is the creation of human beings. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, خَلَقَ الْإِنسَانَ مِن نُطْفَ فَإِذَا هُوَ خَصِيمٌ مُبِينٌ Many parts of the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala likes to remind us that human beings were created from nutfa. We know that and also Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions that the original creation of Adam was dust and water. You've got to start somewhere. <laughs> Thereafter, it is this process. And for you to understand the point Allah is making about this blessing, think about how microscopic a human being starts very microscopic, invisible to the naked eye. That invisible human being, microscopic, goes through several stages until they become bigger. This is just, you start here microscopic, it keeps going, going, going. You will notice that this is all multiplication of cells, and they get bigger and bigger, and they start to differentiate. And then they start to specialize. And then they start to form. By the way, interestingly, human beings and many animals look the same at these embryonic stages, whether it's a tadpole, a frog, <laughs> a salamander, a lizard. We all look the same until we probably get around this face <laughs> right about here. <laughs> Subhanallah. And then about this phase, 20 weeks, you see how slowly the human being has taken shape. And this is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say, وَصَوَّرَكُمْ He fashions you, you know, slowly, cell by cell. You know, if an, when you look at an, an artist, um, an, 
artist that works with sculpture, when they sculpt something. So it takes a piece of clay or something, an artist is trying to make like an, an image of some kind. They spend a lot of time trying to sculpt details on this thing. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is making the details from the inside out, not on the surface, from the inside. <laughs> it is artistry beyond anything. Okay? But the human being doesn't stop here. That's 20 weeks. Eventually you come out. Just look at how the human being will grow until they become mature. Before? After. Before? After. Amazing, isn't it? Our last point is this human being before after is the one who's questioning my existence. Fahida huwa khasimu mubin. And then he questions whether Allah can resurrect. May yuhyil idama wa hiya ramim. How can Allah resurrect dead people? Allah says, Kul yuhyiha alladhi anja'aha awwala marrah wa huwa bi kulli khalqin alim. The one who created it the first time is the one who's capable of resurrecting it the second time. But it's just amazing. Before. After. And look, Allah gave us an ayah in the Quran that actually describe the stages in Surah Al-Hajj, in Surah Al-Mu'minun, stages of embryology. Amazing. No book of religion has these details. In fact, this ayah by itself should be sufficient for everybody to become a Muslim who has a scientific mind or any objective person. Only the Creator would know the secrets. But then again, we get big, too big for ourselves. We think we're smart, all because of this little tiny brain in there. We think we're rational. We can understand complex things. And why should God exist? <laughs> all again, Allah says, think before, after. Now you question me. So I wanted us to start here to, to tell us all, and we asked several questions, that we human beings exist in the universe. Allah says, I created the universe. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, I created the earth. The earth is so special. Scientists have only found, found one like it in the entire creation. <laughs> yeah, sure. Maybe there's an there are earth somewhere. We haven't found them. There are planets that could resemble earth, but nothing like the earth. Just does not exist. A planet that has liquid water flowing, it is very hard to find. It is very hard to find a planet that has the Goldilocks temperature and the combination of gases that form the atmosphere that we know could sustain human life. It is just very hard to find. So scientists, cosmologists have come up with the uh, rare earth theory that perhaps this earth is so rare it's the only one in the entire universe. Maybe there's another planet that sustains a different kind of life, but the one that sustains human beings is this one. <laughs> Subhanallah. If you want to move to Mars, go ahead. <laughs> Just sell your house to me on your way out. You know? <laughs> in few years, you'll be dead in Mars. <laughs> can't breathe the atmosphere. It's just very difficult to live there. The gravitational forces are different, actually. Everything is so different that you will not live a full human life in Mars. You would actually die because of the conditions. Why is that? SubhanAllah. And we ask some of those questions, we get some of these answers. So I wanted us to recap before we transition. And we were reading the verses as we go along. So everybody who's an adult who has a smartphone, pull out your digital mushaf, Surah al nahl Surah number 16 is where we are. And we're about to now take ayah number 5, 6, and 7, 8, and we'll leave 9 for our next session. So the next set of ayat, are we ready? Insha'Allah. Bismillah. The next set of ayat are here. Now Allah transitions from sending the Quran, wahi, the Quran, commissioning Prophet Muhammad وسلم, creating the universe, creating human beings. This is the next set of things Allah said he created. I'll, all, I'll start by reciting part of it so that way you can get some flavor of what you've seen. وَالْأَنْعَامَ خَلَقَهَا 
لكم فيها دفء ومنافع ومنها تأكلون ولكم فيها جمال حين تريحون وحين تسرحون وتحمل أثقالكم إلى بلد لم تكونوا بالغيه إلا بشق الأنفس إن ربكم لرؤوف رحيم You see this ayat والأنعام خلقها لكم فيها دفء ومنافع ومنها تأكلون ولكم فيها جمال حين تريحون وحين تسرحون وتحمل أثقالكم إلى بلد لم تكونوا بالغيه إلا بشق الأنفس إن ربكم لرؤوف رحيم So let's start by somebody reading the translation helping us read the translation Let's have a volunteer. We'll alternate. A brother will read ayah number six and a sister will read ayah number seven. I don't want to make it too big. Yes, do we have a brother or a sister? I'm just trying to make it slightly bigger so that way. All right. Okay, so that's number five. Uh, and go ahead, number six, because it's... Okay, let me leave that to the sisters, because there's beauty in it. I want a sister to read ayah number six. Go ahead. And Allah says, so look at it. So, خلقها, Firstly, Allah created cattle. And from them we get warmed. Lakum fiha difun wamanafi numerous benefits waminha ta'kulun. You eat from them. And she said that walakum fiha jamal. There is beauty in having cattle. When you see them around, when you take them to pasture and you bring them back, you see uh, I mean, have you seen a rancher carry, you know, like guide hundreds of cattle to a place? One human being on a horse and a dog guiding hundreds of animals. Allah is telling us, you cannot control them unless I put control of them to you. That's why Surat Yasin says, Have they not considered the fact that we created at our own, our own hands cattle, which they now control? We made them subjugated. We subjugated them. We domesticated them for you. We like to think that human beings went and domesticated animals. Allah said, no, no. We made them easy for you to control. That's all. Some animals we can never domesticate. You can try. One day they'll kill you. Uh, what happens when a human being raises a chimpanzee after a while? <laughs> Just turn on you. Elephant, turn on you. Tiger, <laughs> ask Siegfried and Roy. <laughs> what happened to the tiger? They were actually punishing these animals to subjugate them. These animals were not willingly participating. A circus elephant is punished to do the tricks. You don't have to punish a cow to come along. You just put the rope on its neck, drag it, follows. That is a big blessing. That's what I says blessing. And number seven, look what they do. They carry your heavy stuff. They carry your loads to lands which you cannot easily reach yourself, except with great difficulty. And we're going to see that. And this is part of the rahmah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allahu Akbar. So let's talk about the creation of cattle. These very docile creatures that seem to, it's hard to talk to them. They're not like dogs. <laughs> you know, cattle. What do you say to a sheep or a goat? You just yell at them, and then they just follow. Goats are stubborn. Everyone who's dealt with goats knows that goats are very stubborn creatures. Donkeys, stubborn. <laughs> but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that, what was the, who remembers what was the first benefit Allah introduced? 
wal an'ama khalaqaha lakum fiha what was the first thing warmth okay so what do we get from cattle they provide us lakum fiha dif'un wa manafi wa minha ta'kulun they provide us meat so we eat these type of animals that are you know, considered cattle grazers we get from them something to drink in milk we get clothing for them you know from their hide leather you can also make houses we're going to see about that so we get all those things meat milk labor leather and hundreds of products that people use every day we're going to see that they provide us many 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 byproducts that you don't see in fact we only consume about 60% of the cow as meat the rest are byproducts that are used for many different things you're about to see so love your cows but don't worship them please they have a creator what makes cattle so special a human being ask yourself how does a cat how does a cow or goat or sheep eats grass but then builds muscles that's their bodies are pretty much muscles and a layer of fat how is it so eating grass greens and yet they build muscles but if human beings want to build muscles we have to eat generally what <laughs> Well, these animals have four chamber stomachs. Human beings has only one compartment in their stomach. These guys have four compartments. They call them ruminators. So they, they eat the grass for now. It goes into one chamber. It digests a little bit, and then they chew it again later. They regurgitate part of it, and they chew. Sometimes you see cows chewing, but they're not, there's no grass in front of them. They're regurgitating <laughs> and doing that. Then it moves to another chamber. Imagine four chambered stomachs. And then they produce milk. Allah tells us there's an eye for that later. And then they form muscles. See? So they're vegetarian, but then they're lean. See some bulls. You know, they have some bovine, like a bison, could be nearly 2,000 pounds heavy. Just simply eating grass. They eat a lot of it, by the way. Cows eat a lot of grass and they drink a lot of water, gallons of water. So do this conversion. SubhanAllah. Look at the different types of cattle. So when Allah said an'am, Generally translated to cattle, but cattle is only one category of an'am. Question, who remembered this from the adults? How many pairs of an'am did Allah send us? Allah tells us a number. Allah tells us a number, digital Quran, whoever has one, go to Surat Az-Zumar. Surat Az-Zumar. You won't go very far. By the second page, you'll find the answer. Surat Az-Zumar. Find the answer. How many pairs? It's a total number, but they come in pairs. So it's a pair of four, total number. Who's going to find it first? Find the eye and Surah Zumar, where Allah tells how many different type of cattle he sent. We're going to see who gets there first. <laughs> I heard, did I hear an answer? Everybody, anybody found it? It's very Surah Zumar. Easy Surah number 39. Surah number 39. Nobody has found the number? How many types of cattle did Allah send? Yes, Chema. Yes, eight. I, yeah. Yes, uh, four pairs. So we don't have them just, when we say cattle in English, it's a, a much smaller scope. But Allah says, you know, an'am should not necessarily translate to cattle, but an'am are animals we derive benefit from. That's why they call it like ni'ma, an'am. But Allah says they have different categories of them. So now I want everybody to go to Surah Al-An'am. Did, any, did we all know that there was a surah called An'am? <laughs> surah Al-An'am, surah number six. Go to ayah number 144. Uh, 143. 143. Al-An'am, 143. Surah number six, ayah number 143. Raise your hand if you're ready. To, yes, his hands are over. 
Yes, but I want you to also tell me what does it say? What are these ty- what are these eight pairs of what? Two of sheep, two of goats, and then go to the the, the next ayah. Two sh- two of sheep, two of goats. So we have. See, so what Allah wants us to focus when we talk about al anam, He wants us to look at goats, sheep, cows, or oxen. They used to call them back in the day. So when we say cattle, we're really talking about the class of cows and ox, and then camels. Camelids are all over. For example, the llama is a camelid. A llama is a type of a camel. So Allah has given us many different types of anam. So my point is. Anam does not necessarily translate to cattle, but cattle is one of the categories, so it's on the cows category. And I'm going to show that to you as well, how many different types. Just look at some of the ones in the cows and ox, especially from the Americas. These are all types of cows and ox. They call these bovine. So bovid animals, that's the scientific name for cows, and pigs are porcine. You have the bison in America, you have the yak in sometimes in Asia, you have the water buffalo in Africa, you have the gayal, the Spanish bull, the zebu. You've seen this type of cow-like animals in different parts of the world. Look how lost creativity. Instead of just just one type of cow, there there are so many species of cows. Some of them are milking cows, you know, the black and white cows, they produce more milk than others. Some cows are better for, they, they have better cuts of meat, like who likes Angus? I know why they call it Angus. Angus cow, you know, very good for meat. You know, different cuts come from different cows. But just look at how the benefits of cows, specifically like a bison, to the Native Americans. For thousands of years, Native Americans relied heavily on bison for everything. Check it out for their food, their clothing, their tools, their jewelry, and their ceremony. Their entire life revolved around the bison. And of course, they could fish. That's why they made kayak and so So they will fish, they'll plant. But here's a tragedy. How do you think the early European settlers got rid of the Native Americans? What technique do you think they used that is related to bison? Say that again. Ah, he's getting warm. They killed off a lot of the bison. They killed them off so that way the Native Americans have no source of benefit left. They use these animals for everything. It's evil, yes. And that is why I tell you guys always every year, you and I should not celebrate Thanksgiving simply because our Native American citizens find it offensive. They killed off their food supply, they got rid of them, and they made a fictitious dinner to change the narrative. As a Muslim, you, you should not buy into any falsehoods and think it's good. Thanksgiving is a good change of narrative. Use something good to replace something very evil that happened. When they know that they relied on these, killing off the... To the point that we had hundreds of thousands, millions of bison in America, the population dropped to a few thousands. To the point they almost became extinct and they were, they were forced to be preserved. I just want you to see how, we get, how human beings can get so much benefit from an animal. Think about the early human beings on this earth. I'm not talking about evolutionary theory. I'm talking about the fact that scientists agree Homo sapien has only been here about 100,000 years. Why is that? There are no traces of Homo sapien that go far back. 500 years, 1,000, nah. Not about just a little over 100,000 years. For us to survive, I mean, if Adam landed in Dunya, <laughs> what is he going to use as clothes? <laughs> Say that again? Yeah, this is what he has to use. He has to take leaves, make something, but that's going to fly off as soon as the leaves dry, right? <laughs> he needs something more permanent. The height of an animal. Okay, what are you going to use to plant seeds in, in the soil? What's, what's going to help you make do work. You need a strong animal that you can control. So they have a lot of benefits. Now let's take this further to an industrial level. Remember, we only consume about 50-60% of the meat. What happens to the rest? 
This is the benefit we get from cattle. Let me just zoom this back a little bit to normal. Take a good look at what we get from cows and bovids. Let's start from the bones, hooves, and horns. What do we get from there? Read that up. What do we get from there? Kids, do you know that the glue that you use in school comes from the hooves of cows? Yeah, and everybody likes that little glue stick they get. Elmer's uh, nice little glue stick. Well, that's where we get adhesives from, sticky stuff like, you know, glues and uh, sticky tape. Band-Aid, where do we get all that sticky stuff? So these are things, buttons, charcoal. Some for, yeah, you can, the bones can be used for that. When we say China, they mean porcelain. They use some animal byproducts to make porcelain. So they don't mean China, the country. Imagine if China, the country, was made by cows. That would be really funny. It would mean that some of the Hindus will just worship the entire China. That's a joke for you. Combs, conditioner, dice. Dice, are, they use the bones of cattle to make dice. That's strong dice. Football helmets has some, some glass, some glue, laminations, pet food, piano keys, plant food, plastics, you name it. Shampoos, toothbrushes. Yeah, the hairs of cows can be used and paste can be used for brushes. Let's take a look at the fat. Okay, the fat from the cows. When they slaughter cows, they take the fat. They just don't throw it away. You know, when you go to the halal store, you buy meat, they just skin it off, and they're supposed to collect it and send it back. <laughs> they're supposed to send it back to somewhere it can be processed. So beef fat is called tallow. That's what they call it in industrial terms, tallow. They use it for many, many different things. Beef fat, antifreeze, biodiesel, candles, cement, ceramics, chalk, chewing gum, crayons, deal, detergents. Did you know that a soap is made up of a fat? and something like um, a, a, an alkali like sodium hydroxide mixed together, it gives you stuff. You know, we did this all in science. You guys remember that? Have you guys ever made soap in science class? It is fun to make soap in science class. You need a type of oil. So you can use either vegetable oil, but easily they use animal oil, beef fat, tallow to make soap. And they can use pig fat too. But look at that. Some fireworks, you know, lipstick, makeup, margarine. So before we had, I can't believe it's not butter. <laughs> I can't believe it's not butter. It's a good marketing, uh, you know, for product that makes butter without using the animal byproduct. Is to use vegetable like canola oil and other oils to make something that tastes like butter, but it's actually not butter because real butter must come from milk. But yes, the real butter Ghee is made of what? Hey, who likes ghee? It smells wonderful, right? If you fry with ghee, it's definitely different than frying with a you know, vegetable. You can't have curry without ghee. I mean, it's just, uh, you know, it doesn't taste the same. Well, you know, thank a lot for the, <laughs> the animal fat. Look how many different things you get from the fat, including toothpaste. Now, I have to make a point, a fickle point. Sometimes, some Muslims are very obsessed with haram and halal. So they go as far as to say, toothpaste is haram, um, soap is haram to use, blah, 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 blah. And they say, why? Because it came out of a cow that was not slaughtered in a halal way. My advice to all of you, don't take haram and halal to chemical compounds. Stop at the point of just eating the meat. Don't take it down to the molecular level. Because in general, in Sharia, when something undergoes chemical change, it also can change its permissibility. Don't focus on monoglycerides and diglycerides or pigment molecules. Don't go there. Leave your deen where Allah stopped. Don't get into arguments with people, is Colgate haram or Crest haram because they use bovine. No, if they use porcine stuff, pigs, yes, you can object to that. But don't bring it to where cows are. It's just, it's beyond the scope of the everyday person's understanding of Sharia. When something undergoes a chemical change, I mean, they just don't take, your toothpaste is not a slab of cow fat. 
it isn't. It is mixed with so many other chemicals to create what it does. Say that again. Yeah. Manure. Even what the cow poops is useful. <laughs> fertilizer. Where do you think fertilizer comes from? Phosphorus. And by the way, these things can become explosive. Don't play with them. <laughs> Look at the hide, the skin, the hair, and the skin of animals. We can make adhesives, air filters, balls that we play with, belts, boots, candies. Look at that, candies. Clothing, drywall, footballs, gummy bears. Some gummy bears use actually poor signs on you. You have to look at the ingredients. If it's bovine, they'll say it clearly. If it's, sometimes they don't want to say it because it's a mixture. So it's hard, but if they have the kosher sign, then you know they cannot use poor sign. Leather, marshmallows. Don't you guys love marshmallows? Yeah. yeah. Paint brushes, plaster, sneakers. So that's from the hair and skin. And look at the internal organs. Cake mixes. They get it from some what they extract from the blood and all the fluids in the in the cow. Rennet. Some of their own enzymes are used. Dyes, inks, you name it. Imitation eggs. Instrument strings like you know, guitar strings. I mean, we used everything from the cow. You can see why Hindus worship the cow. There's a lot of benefit here. I mean, there's no other than the pig, which is they derive similar things from them. The cow is really an industrial. You can literally see the benefit. That's why Allah emphasizes an'am in Quran. Human beings derive the most benefit from all the animals, cattle and the next class from all the other. See, many animals, we just eat them like fish. You just eat the fish in the sea. Right? But look at the benefits. You get a lot of benefits from fish too. But do you see Allah's point though? It says, Lakum fiha difu, you get warmth from clothing and stuff. Wa manafi. A lot of benefits. Allah doesn't even want to go down the list of what you can get to enumerate them. Wa manafi. Wa minha ta'kulun. In fact, eating came last. <laughs> In the sequence of mentioning, yeah, you, get, you don't have to eat beef to get protein, right? You can eat vegetables to get protein. You can eat, you know, for example, nuts and certain things. Chickpeas, protein. Many plants give us protein. Your body can synthesize proteins and carbs anyway. It can. Cows eat only grass and then they develop muscles. So you can get it from plants. But that's why Allah put eating last. SubhanAllah. What do you, look what else we get from just different breeds of cows. The Holstein. The infamous black and white cows. I don't know why they have to be black and white, but you get a lot of milk from these cows. The Jersey cow. You get some types of nice butters and stuff. You know, you get the red pole. You get some types of nice, you know, the, you know, different types of, you know, butters and butter fat and stuff. Look at the Angus. Boy, black Angus cows. If you go to the grocery store, black Angus cows are the most expensive meat sometimes you find. It's just right. Huh? <laughs> no, co yeah, COVID. Uh, they feed the cow beer. Yeah, you know, the Japanese, okay, we're going to raise this cow in a different way. Um, look at that. They... We just get so much benefits from cows. The meat, the dairy, the butters, and everything in cakes, candies. Uh, when you look at how they arrange all the aisles, many, many of those aisles are cow dominated. If you look at it, once you pass vegetables, it's just cows going all the way down. <laughs> Your cereals, there's a lot of cow in there. You go to the beauty products, a lot of cows. Most of Walmart is filled with cows, cow products. Benefits, and here are, I was saying, the different types of, what we say cattle, we mean ruminants like this in, in English when we say cattle. It's looking at this type of animals, bison, ox, cows, you name it, of different types and different sizes in different parts of the world, you'll find them. Uh, I think the African buffalo is probably the heaviest of them all. It can grow over 2,000 pounds. Imagine an animal as heavy as a car. I mean, it's, it's even hard to kill them. Even lions will not touch a buffalo. It will take like 10 lions to subdue an injured buffalo. They, they're very aggressive, 
but a human being can tame an animal which other animals cannot subdue. Allah says, I, says, I made it that way. Thank Allah. Remember when we looked at the ayat, Allah said, we get warmth, we get benefits, we eat from them, and sister recited that we, what else do we get from them? Beauty, right? Remember when I said, walakum fiha jamal, how many beauty products we get from them? Allah himself said it. But look what it looks like when you see them. Allah says this beauty, even when you bring them home from pasturing. Different color cows, and sometimes if you're a rancher, you're going to watch them in the landscape. Isn't this a beautiful landscape? Imagine you standing there, the guy who took this picture. See blue mountains with, you know, snowy tips. You look at your cattle just down there in the green pastures. It, it has just this amazing feeling on a human being. Don't you wonder if there are cows in Jannah? I mean, Jannah has milk. Allah says, Anharun min labanin lam What makes the milk in Jannah? Who knows? Is it Jannah cows? Allahu a'la. We'll find out. My point is, we have this connection with cows. And then, they carry load for you in places you can't reach. Most of us have never seen this alive. Have, have any of you seen cows carry load like this? The only parents, none of these American kids. <laughs> they see buses, they see tractor trailers, they see 18 wheelers carrying shipping containers, they see trains. And we replace some, but how many thousands of years, till this day in some rural areas all over the world, this is the mode of transportation for heavy stuff. Farmers in Asia, in Africa, they can only rely on these animals. They don't have all the technology. And part of the problem we have living in the West or in an industrialized nation, because we rely on technology, we thank Allah less for the benefits. These animals taught us how to industrialize. Through these animals, we, 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 de we, de we designed technology. How did we innovate from this to something else? Well, before the car, it were horses pulling a chariot, right? Pulling a carriage. The carriage was shaped just like the chassis of a car. Horses pulled it until we designed a steam locomotive and said, you know what? You can put an engine to drive wheels instead of, the, because the, the, the chariot already and, and the carriage already had wheels. The concept was there. And this is how Allah inspired human beings. He gives us a concept. We used it for thousands of years until somebody says, wait a minute. We can make it go faster by just changing the animal with an engine. Now we have electric cars, cars that have no combustion engine. We, that's what innovation means. <laughs> you take a problem or the state of something, and then you try to devise a more efficient way of using it or a completely different paradigm of using it, but for the purpose of improvement. There's no innovation without improvement. If you innovate, it doesn't cause improvement. It's a waste of time, just ideas. But Allah tells us that these animals carry the load. You know how much a, the train carries of ship, you know, goods that come from shipping containers all over the world? Trains in America, they carry from state to state. Imagine without large ships, if we couldn't sail the oceans, how do you bring all those goods from China you can't live with? <laughs> all of those are benefits, and Allah talk about them later. The last thing about cows... Again, I just want to give you a summary of the benefits you get from cow. We got pharmaceutical benefits, some medications we manufacture from cows, China, candies and stuff, toothpaste, paint, makeup, ice cream, sports equipment, brushes of all kinds. They come from the cow. We can't say enough of, about cows. Surah Al-An'am talks about Anam. It's not entirely about Anam. It's a, it's, a, it's a surah of Tawheed. But it connects it to the cows, the cattle, because some peoples end up worshipping cows or glorifying them. The Arabs did, the Hindus do. And many other cultures, does the bull, the cow, is a sign of either prosperity or divinity. You see it across human beings. You see it amongst the ancient Egyptians. They just had this fascination about cows and others, a human being with a cow's head as a god, for example. So you see that a lot. The next ayah, ayah number eight, are we ready? I'll recite. 
أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم والخيل والبغال والحمير لتركبوها وزينة ويخلق ما لا تعلمون This is an important ayah. I'll say it again. Allah says, والخيل والبغال والحمير لتركبوها Now Allah introduces a benefit different than an'am. لِتَرْكَبُوهَا وَزِينَ But something about beauty comes up again. But then he, add, he, 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 he adds something here. وَيَخْلُقُ مَا لَا تَعْلَمُونَ So, let's have a, a sister recite ayah 8 for us, inshallah. Somebody different. Shema, you want to take that one? See, we are obsessed with extraterrestrials. <laughs> Allah says, I've created things that you just don't know. <laughs> well, don't worry about those. Allah says, there are things that actually exist now you don't know. <laughs> he creates what you just don't know. Subhanallah. Imagine when Allah, Day of Judgment, brings everything created in one place. For you to see everything He's created. Al ins wal jin wal bahaim, the animals, everything. It would be amazing standing and seeing dinosaurs just running about. <laughs> Big ones, small ones, of all kinds of creatures. Creatures from the sea, a lot of creatures in the sea, by the way. Yom al qiyamah, Allah assembles everyone, everything. So, wal khayla wal birgal. So, Allah created wal an'ama khalaqaha, and He also created al khayl wal birgal wal hamir. That are the horse, the mule, and the donkey. Question. This is for the kids. Do you know the difference between a mule and horses and donkeys? Do you know the difference between a mule and how do we get mules? Who knows what a horse looks like? Who knows what a donkey looks like? But many of us don't know what a mule looks like. We, everybody knows what a horse looks like, what a donkey looks like. Take a look at it. What do you notice about the face of a mule compared to a donkey and a horse? Yes, it has longer ears like what? Look at the picture. It has longer ears like what? Like a donkey. What about the length of the face? It's like a horse. What does that tell you about a mule? Yes, a mule is a hybrid. It's a mixture between a donkey and a horse. So sometimes when a horse... A female horse mates with a male donkey, you get a mule. They specifically call it a mule, or they sometimes call it a john. But when the opposite happens, when a male horse mates with a female donkey, they get what's called a, a hini. Funny names. Still mule, but the different mixture. That's how mules arrive. But the funny thing about mules, they cannot have children. See? Horses have 64 chromosomes, a pair of 32. Donkeys have less. They have 62. And mules end up with 63, an odd number. And for some reason in nature, odd number chromosome animals do not reproduce. Because, you see, my, I don't want to get into it, but meiotic and mitotic cell division yields to cause this, you know. So that's what causes that. When cell divides regular cells, they create two, they create an exact copy wherein that has the full set of chromosomes. When gametes, for example, we call them sex cells, when they, when they divide, they only take one half. Well, if you have an odd number of chromosomes, <laughs> how do you divide that into a half? It doesn't work, is it? Rare conditions can see something happen. But my point is, Allah says, I let that happen. Because he named it, wal khayla wal bighala wal hamir. I give you horses, mules, and donkeys. And what do we do with them first? What's the first benefit we get from horses versus cows? Which one feels better to ride, a cow or a horse? Far better. What's, what's better to ride, a goat or a horse? Horse, you see? Allah says, I created them to have the physique for different use cases. Cows for carrying load and eating and milking. 
Porsche is more for running and riding. You see? For leisure. You get, you, we do get a leisure from horses. And donkeys are similar to cows that they can also carry heavy load. Donkeys are extremely strong creatures. But you know, donkeys, everybody thinks donkeys are stupid. Donkeys are actually smart animals. It's just that when they detect danger, they do not move. Because they're so intelligent, they, they, do not, they don't waste time about that. That's why one of the political parties has a donkey as a sign. I mean, the smart donkeys are patient creatures. They're, they're actually very nice to human beings. Donkeys are very nice to human beings. But Allah tells you that, they, therefore, riding is better to ride them than to ride a cow. Yeah, I mean, how do you saddle a huge black Angus? You can't even do that. Or a longhorn. <laughs> how does that happen? It's so hard to saddle a cow, but it's easy to saddle a horse. And horses can run fast. Horses can run 45, 50 miles per hour. If you went to battle with a cow, you'll be killed before you even get to the front line. <laughs> it just moves slow. They may not even move at all. They're like, well, I'm not going there. I just want to eat right here. Horses can run. Horses have great sense of smell. It's in their nostrils. Horses can detect from your odor if there's something wrong with you. Yeah. Horses, very intelligent. Not to mention horse hair, we use it in beauty products, right? Horse hair, I mean, some people's weave is horse hair. Yeah, it's horse hair. The leather of horse, beautiful. When you see when they braid the horse's hair, when you see horses charging into battle, it's like, whoa, you know, before we had tanks, it was horses. So this is how we get mules. It's a hybrid. Some animals can be hybridized, like horses and zebra can mate. A lion and a tiger has happened call a liger. But the benefit of horses is tremendous as well. So cattle is for our feeding and industrial stuff. Look what we also get from horses. We've used them a lot in wars. Human beings use horses in wars. We use them as a means of transport, of course, pulling carriages. We use them for leisure and sports, and we also use them even in mining. Moreover, horses have been used to develop Vaccines and stuff from the back, you know, from way back when, like diphtheria, antidote was first developed using horse. So you see, horses also, like cattle, play an essential role. But cattle play more effective roles for us than horses. Even if you don't see a, a horse or benefit from a horse, everybody drinks milk, right? Well, if you're not lactose intolerant, you benefit from a cow more so than in, in, the, in, that, in that respect. Now, as we come up to the top of the hour, which we have to make the advent of Asr, and then have our teas, and did somebody forget our refreshments and stuff? I didn't see any donuts back there. They were in the refrigerator. I'm very disappointed. We, we, we'll have something. Look at all these benefits of horses. I am going to ask, everything looks obvious except this one. Let me ask you, what do you see here? Describe this picture. Yes? Do you describe the picture? This one. This picture. Just describe the picture. What do you see? So what again? Who's holding the horse? Say that again. What describe the trainer? What is the trainer wearing here? Yes, I, it's the obvious. I just want everyone to know. It's a hijabi woman and a little small horse sitting in a bus. A hijabi woman with a little horse sitting in a bus. So she's obviously not training the, the horse in a bus. She is taking the horse, very interestingly. But I'll tell you something better than what he said. He said that she's taking the horse somewhere. Yes. Alhamdulillah, not. But I'm going to reverse what he said. Reverse what he said. He said, she is taking the horse. Reverse that statement and, and say to me. Reverse his statement. Say it again. The horse is taking her. She is a blind Muslimah who refuses to use a dog, a guiding dog, and so they give her a guiding horse. Horses can guide you as well. 
Amazing. I mean, imagine she insists, I don't want to touch a dog. It would have been Sharia perfectly okay because she has a need for a guiding dog. She insisted, we find solutions when you ask for an alternative. As a Muslim, as a believer, always ask, is there an alternative? We have guiding horse. Now, of course, a guiding dog is much smaller, can fit in many places. It's hard to take this horse into a building. Something like, what if you have a revolving door in the building? A horse can't go in, you have to stay outside. Guiding dogs. By the way, Allah gave us dogs for that purpose, for hunting, for all that kind of stuff. It's just that all that stuff should be outside of the house, not inside licking your face. I mean, people do that kind of stuff. Dogs are useful. Sharia has no problem with you owning a dog for a Sharia reason. But because she chose not to have a dog anyway, look, she has a guiding horse. She was featured in many, many... I think she lives in the UK. Um, can you imagine a horse guiding a blind human being? It's amazing. What else are we using the uh, horses here for? Picture on the left. What are we using the horses for? Yes, racing. The Kentucky Derby. Have you seen the Kentucky Derby? You see how fast those horses are running? For like minutes. What's the fastest animal on land? Land animal that runs on legs. The cheetah, how fast does the cheetah run? No, 60 miles per hour. But it can only do it for about a few seconds, no more than 60 seconds. I mean, you know what the heart rate is on a cheetah when it's running like that? It could die just running. Can you imagine horses can run for miles? Cheetah doesn't run for too many miles. It stops running after 60 seconds. A horse can continue going, going, going. You can see like a human being like to deliver an important message, riding a horse, riding a horse for like hours. How does animals have served man? Guiding horse, race horse, what do you think they're doing with these horses here? Battle, you see, going to battle with horses, yes. War, for a long time before we had guns and tanks and military vehicles, we only used horses. Let's tell you something interesting about horses. Horses usually don't trample on a fallen human being. They normally don't do that. They stop. SubhanAllah. Imagine these things have consciousness. What do you think they're doing with these horses over here? Yes, we use them in agriculture for plowing. We use, can use cows, we can use horses. And something new about horses you need to know, horses are very good for therapy. Physical, emotional, and psychological therapy. Horses can really improve a human being's emotional state. When you st sit on top of a horse and you look, you just feel great. When you ride a horse, it feels exhilarating. When you pet a horse, they, they bond with you. Have you seen that sometimes when a human being comes close to a horse, the head of a horse is right. Horses are so tall that their heads reach the head of a human being. So when you actually touch faces with a horse, they feel it, they respond to you. When you touch them a certain way, they respond. When you call them, they come. Horses are really amazing creatures. They have a lot of benefits for human beings. S sometimes overlapping with cattle, but sometimes they're just different. Allah sent us cows and horses because we can use them for slightly different means. We don't milk horses. You don't see nobody selling horse milk in the, <laughs> in the grocery store. Do we have milk? Yes. But cow's milk is just unique. Have any of you had goat's milk? Ugh. Why is that? Why is the milk of cow just so refreshing in the center? <laughs> camel milk, I will not even try. <laughs> Have you had camel milk? How does it taste like? Yes, uh, cow's milk is just perfect. You know, a lot of baby formula has cow's milk. <laughs> cow's milk for making human beings grow. Isn't that amazing? Human beings have milk too, but cow's milk is the best. So we have all these benefits as we come to the top of the hour and we'll take a short break. Let's answer a couple of questions. What are the different types of cattle or anam? We said that already, different types of anam. So we have the cows, cattle, ox, that's one group. What else from the, the, the eight pair? But we just first, we'll start with the cattle, the anam. The other one will go to another part. Anam, we have ox, 
cows and oxes. Say that again. Yes, we have sheep. Remember the tamanya azwaj? Camels, and then the other one that's very stubborn. We'll put them somewhere else on the other side. Goats. When we say an'am, we focus just on the, the, the pairs that give us eight. Allah says two of ox, two of camels, two of goats, two of sheep. Then when we talk, so those are the different types of cattle. But then the ones that we have, the others that we use that are not considered cattle are horses, mules, and donkeys. What are the benefits we get from cattle? Let's see if we can remember some of them. Let's put them in categories, yes. Give me a category. So food, specific category of food. What do we... Do you say food? Yeah, give me... A, no, give me a specific type. Say that again. We can use them for farming, uh-huh, but meat. You said food. Meat, so I was saying meat. I want to hear it. What kind of benefit we get from cattle? Give me a category of benefits. Say that again. Clothes. Le you're wearing a leather jacket. Toothpaste. So, see, hygiene products. What else? We can use them in glass. So, remember that, and I'll show it to you again. So, that's good. What benefits do we get from horses and mules and donkeys? We can get transportation. We can ride them, yes? Therapy, yes. What else do we get from mules, donkeys, and horses? We can race them. Yes, we can have sports from them, horse racing, or being an equestrian just to ride them. Yes. Cows, uh, no, just horses, mules, and donkeys. Benefits. Any benefits else? Don't forget there's something pharmaceutical about them. Yes, it will be used for therapy. Somebody mentioned. Also, we can get medicines. We can manufacture medicine from them. Last question. What, I should say, what are some of the major differences? So I want a major difference in the benefits of cattle versus horses. A benefit that we get from a cow but not a horse, and a benefit we get from a horse but not a cow. Or when it's better from a cow versus an horse. I see two hands up. Okay, we'll take your hand. One. Food. See, when Allah mentioned cat and am, we mean hatakulun. But when He talk about horses, He doesn't mention eating. That is why in Islam, from a fiqh perspective, we should not be eating horses. It's it's not entirely haram per se. It's meat, but it's not the favorite animal Allah sent. And that's why we don't slaughter horses as the gabiha. Allah prefers the anam. Excellent, mashallah. Yes. We get milk from cows and we don't normally drink horse milk, although horses have milk. Yes? Uh, oh, okay. We're, oh, yeah. Yes, yeah. <laughs> mashallah. I'm going to get rid of that. I want to see everybody. Go ahead. Absolutely. We ride horses better. Horses are faster. They're better for riding versus a cow. Yes. Cheese. So from the milk of cows, we had all this stuff. So if you look at it, some of the benefits of having a, ca a, ca a cattle over horses, not one over there, but where you see the fuddle of the cattle is that we eat their meat, we drink their milk, okay? And then on the horse's side, we ride them because they're faster, they're good for that kind of stuff, mashallah. And um, when you go to war, which one would you rather take, a cow or a horse? Oh, yeah. In the United States, in two, three hundred years ago, if you want to send mail from the East Coast to the West Coast, are you going to take a camel or a cow or a horse? You take a horse. You want to run. Mail was delivered by horsemen before. You didn't know that the Postal Service, that's why the insignia is somebody writing a chat. You know? So these, yeah, so these are the answers to some of the questions. There are many more answers. So what are the different types of cattle? We have bovids, which are like cows and ox. That's the technical term we have for them, bovine. We have camels and camelids. We have goats and sheep. The benefits of cattle, meat, 
something to drink in milk, clothing, we have some transportation, obviously, they help with heavy things. Medicines, we have more industrial use of cows than most animals. What are the uh, benefits of horses? Well, we ride them, we use them for leisure, we use them for sport, we use them for medicine, we take them to war. Benefits of cows versus horses. On the cow side, we have meat and milk versus horses, fighting and racing. See? Allah gave us all of this. He says in Surah An-Nahl, Wal an'ama khalaqaha. I created this for you to have these benefits. And I created the horse, the mule, and the donkey so you can ride them and get beauty from them. And then I have other things that you could not, you don't know about. Things that live in the sea, things that live in outer space, you never know. Allah says. By the way, we have not discovered everything that lives in the sea yet. We just have not. Especially very close to the ocean floor. There are things that live there. They cannot even survive up. So they just stay down there. And then we always want to find extraterrestrials. Find all the animals in the earth first. <laughs> okay? And that's where we'll stop, inshallah, so we can take a break for the adhan and can have some, you know, small refreshments. Next week, we're going to talk about something Allah provides to mankind as a benefit that will help you on life's journey. We're going to talk about it. In fact, our next session, you know, not this coming weekend, but the following weekend, two weeks from now, let me give you a date. That is, that will be on the 18th. When we meet again on the 18th of December, we're going to talk about just this one benefit that will give you a way through life. It's a benefit that will guide you through life. Okay, and we all need to know that. So I expect that everybody will come. After that week, it is winter break, so you guys have nothing to do. Yay. And so let's learn more about our faith. Before we make the adhan, who wants to make the adhan? Who wants to make the adhan? Who wants to make the adhan? But the person must know how to make the adhan. Okay, I'll take you. Next, you'll have that next time. Mubarak will make the adhan. أقول قولي هذا واستغفر الله لي ولكم ولسائر المسلمين فاستغفروه إنه هو الغفور الرحيم. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Shadu an la ilaha illa Allah. Ashadu an la ilaha illa أشهد أن محمد رسول الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاة حي على الصلاة حي على الفلاح حي على الفلاح 